Hello, and welcome to this new GastroPlus tutorial. Today, we will discuss about pregnancy PPK models. My name is Maxime Lemerdi, and I will be your presenter today. Before we talk about the model by itself, I would like to discuss on how currently clinically for information are obtained for pregnant women. For some drugs, the first situation is that actually a clinical trial is performed to evaluate the safety and the efficacy of the drug in the pregnant populations. Those clinical trials are done in a safe environment, but they can be done, ethically speaking, only if the drug provides direct benefit to either the mom or the fetus. The most common situation, therefore, is post-marketing studies where the drugs are given to large populations of pregnant women, and it's only after a large number of subjects have suffered from significant side effects that they can be detected. So there are some safety concerns about this approach and obviously ethical limita limitations. Therefore, it seems obvious that other approaches are necessary and modeling can be a great tool to support drug development and look into the safety for the pregnant population who is at risk. For at Simulation Plus, we developed a PPK model able to predict both the maternal and the fetal PK at different sides, um, times of pregnancy. On the left-hand side of these figures, you can see the maternal PPK models, which is similar to the typical PPK structures that we have for uh, healthy subjects, except this time we include two new tissues, the uterus and the maternal placenta. During the evolution of pregnancy, we consider the weight, ga the weight gain, and we consider also all of the physiological changes that concern the renal system, the gastrointestinal system, the cardiovascular system, the body compositions, and metabolism, especially the enzyme expression level. From the fetal side on the right, we have a simplified structure for the PPK tissue where the fetus by itself is represented as a one compartment fetal compartment, and we have both venous and arterial blood flow. The fetal placenta is also presented and connected directly to the maternal placenta. Once again, as the pregnancy evolves, the hematocrit level on the fetal side, the fetus height and weight will also be evolving, as well as the uh, renal fractions. Connections between the maternal and the fetus can happen using four pathways, and the importance of those pathways is dependent on where you are in the pregnancy. So we have the transmembranous pathway, the intramembranous pathway, the fetal pathway, and the transplacental pathway. So now I would like to show you in GastroPlus how you can easily set up a PPK model for pregnant populations. Here on your screen, you can see GastroPlus. I've already opened the database for the drug we will talk about today, which is cefazoline. Cefazoline is an antibiotic used during uh, the delivery process to prevent infections that could occur. This drug is typically administered IV. Before we do a simulation for the pregnant populations, we need to make sure the model is able to predict the PK in healthy subjects. So to do so, I've already pre-created a record for the IV bolus one grams, and I will launch the simulations directly. Cefazoline is a drug that is eliminated by the kidney through a combination of filtrations and secretions using two transporters, MRP4 and O83. Those transporters are including the models and their VMAX were fitted to be able to capture the observed data. As we go on the graph tab, you can see how the model describes the data relatively well. And actually, if I click on new plot, I can better see how my data are being captured. 
as I've mentioned, these drugs are limited by the kidney. So let's see how the model is able to predict the urinary secretion for this particular drug. And to do so, I can go to select curves, click on the pharmacokinetic tab, and select urine. And you can see how in light blue, the urinary secretion is well captured by the model. So now that we have this validated model, let's make sure we can predict the PK in both the maternal and the fetal side. To do so, I will copy this drug record and give it a specific name. I have already pre-created the support file that contains the information for the plasma and the fetal venous return concentration time course. I need to adjust the dose slightly from an IV bolus to an IV infusions with a time of 0.05 hours for the infusions. Next, I need to create a new PPK model that is able to describe an account for the physiological information of a pregnant woman. So let's click on new PPK. First, let's, let's change the gender from male to female. And then we can change the health status from healthy to pregnant. Based on the publication information, let's change the physiological parameters. Let, the age was 33 years old. The gestation age is 39 weeks. And the body weight during delivery is 79 kilograms. I can then click on OK. And this will save my new PPK model and save all of the information. I will reduce my simulation length to six hours and launch the simulations. Let's see how the model is able to predict the PK on the maternal side. First of all, you can see the CMAX seems to be relatively well predicted, and the AUC is also really good. If we look at the graph tab, you see how the model describes overall really well the observed information from the maternal side. Then let's now have a look at the fetus. So I will clear this plot to have a clean picture, select curves, and on the pharmacokinetic tab, I can scroll down and find the fetal venous return concentrations right there. You can see that the prediction overall is in the right range, but it seems the dynamic is not correct. The absorption seems to be too fast. We know this drug is a substrate of transporters, especially MRP4, that is present in the placenta and it could therefore limit its diffusion in the placenta to reach the fetal compartment. So let's account for those transporters by switching the structure of the placenta from perfusion limited to permeability limited. And to do so, I can go to edit PPK model. And you can see here on my screen, the PPK structure. I can make a right click on the placenta change tissue model to permeability limited. And I want to calculate the permeability parameter PSTC. I, I have already loaded a pre a specific PSTC parameter. So now you can see by unchecking and checking it, these values are counted for all of my tissues, the kidney, the placenta maternal, and the placenta fetal. Let's close this, and it will save the results. Now, I can do the simulation again. CMAX has changed slightly, but the prediction is still really good. And from the AUC side, the prediction is pretty much the same. So from the maternal side, changing the placenta structure had a very limited impact. And this is what we can see once again on this graph. Now, what I would like to do is to 
put a new plot again. Clear this information, select. And on the graph, you will see the fetal venous, the fetal venous concentrations. And here in these two plots, you can see on the right hand side when I had a perfusion limited placenta, and on the left hand side when I had a permeability limited placenta. And it seems the concentrations are much well described as such. So, the take home message of these workshops are that there are currently ethics and safety concerns for pregnant population during development. Pregnancy PPK models can predict both maternal and fetal PK and or exposures. And in GastroPlus, it's very simple to predict this exposure by simply creating a new pregnancy PPK physiology model. And to do so, you can just select and click on the new PPK button and then select a female pregnant for the status and define the physical, physiological parameters, body weight, GA, and, the, and um, the age of the subject. To learn more, I would like to direct you with our paper on this topic that describes all of the roots and the needs of the models. And we have also a webinar on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. And for more information, you can visit our website at www.simulations-plus.com or send us an email at info at simulationsplus.com. Thank you very much and see you soon.